Alright, so I'm going to build the first prototype of the new Uprising uh, control board based on the Open Revolt version 2.0 here. Uh, version 1 never made it uh, into a uh, actual device. Um, but uh, I'm just going to show how I build a board here. So this is all surface mount mainly. And um, so I got a stencil here that I made. You can see it there. And uh, it's just cut into a, uh, this is actually a overhead transparency film that I cut with a, uh, a vinyl cutter. And um, yeah, so that lays right over the board like that. Zoom in a little bit, see it a little better. So, uh, if I lift it up, you can see it. It just lays down there and uh, covers all the uh, the areas that allow that are open, allow the solder to paste to go through, and then uh, it keeps the solder off of uh, yeah, it's a little off of the rest of the board. <laughs> so. This is the solder paste. It's uh, just like a thick, it's uh, made up of little tiny balls of solder held in suspension with like some kind of flux. And this stuff's water soluble. So you'll put a bead of it along the back here. And then you take the squeegee and just squeegee it right into the holes. Nice even stroke. And uh, That'll uh, put the solder down. So I'm going to do that real quick. Alright, so I just squeegee the solder on the board. And then you, uh, there it is there. You just lift it off nice and straight and carefully. Little jig that I made, I forgot to point that out. I just hold the uh, stencil in there good. And then this is actually, um, it's actually a sheet of sheet metal underneath there. Maybe you'll see it a little bit on the side. And, uh, you can see the sheet metal in there, and then I covered it with some uh, clear, smooth vinyl stuff. And then that allows me to use these refrigerator magnets to hold the circuit boards in place and line it up. So if you look at the board now, focus in there, you can see the solder placed on all the little pads. And, uh, like even the little tiny ones over here, it's kind of hard to get a focus on it. That's a little better. Um, place down all the pads, you put the parts down, and then pop it in the uh, little toaster oven I got out in my garage, and then uh, you'll have a circuit board. So I'm going to put the parts down now. Alright, <coughs> so here we are, about ready to put the parts down. And uh, I got my board, and I'm sitting on the rack that'll go in the toaster oven. And it uh, just makes it a little easier. I can uh, spin the rack around and it makes it easier to pick up without shaking the board too much. Because um, all that will be holding the parts to the board is the stickiness of the solder. So, there's the board. I got my box of parts. There's, uh, there's something like uh, 120 different parts on this board, I believe. And uh, I've got my uh, computer here with my... Uh, layout and uh, my schematic so I'll just start plucking them out of the box looking up where they go to make sure and uh, put them down with my uh, handy little tweezers Alright, 
here it is uh, I put everything on that I had the only thing left for surface mount stuff is uh, these three optocouplers uh, the one on the left is uh, for the four output channels and the two on the right you can see there are for the five input channels um, other than that, oh, there's one more piece there's uh, a little tiny logic gate, you can see it right above that little capacitor there in the middle of the screen uh, five pins, I uh, ordered the wrong footprint so uh, I'll have to do something about that probably just uh, glue it on top of the ethernet chip there and uh, connect it up dead bug style for now, good enough for a prototype um, that is what prototyping's for so uh, other than that I lost one resistor which is that little guy right there and uh, but uh, I had some extra 20k's in the garage which is what it was so that's perfect now we're uh, gonna go pop it in the toaster oven out in the garage all right, here we are in the garage, and uh, you can see the uh, circuit board in there, reflowing away, and uh, just leave it in there for another couple minutes. We'll take it out, and then uh, I'll show you what the next step is. It's gonna be something you'd be a little surprised with. Um, so on the way out, I also noticed that uh, there's two more parts that I don't have, which are two diodes. Um, the board was ordered actually uh, before I found an error with it and uh, those ha do have the wrong footprint so I'll have to kind of stand those up tombstone and uh, do some little jumper wires on those um, down to the their other pads on the board um, but I'll get those ordered along with that other logic chip and those two optos or three optos and uh, we'll put those back together so alright about another minute left we'll uh, take it out of the oven all right, so here it is, all soldered up nice, and uh, there's only a couple little spots. So this, uh, the new tension, there's one on the uh, main chip there, and then uh, I think there was one little tiny one up on the Ethernet chip. I can't get it to focus. Um, and a couple little crooked resistors. Uh, but those are no big deal. Get those straightened out. And uh, so on to this next part. You may be wondering what this paintbrush is for. And uh, what that noise is. Well, the noise is actually the faucet. And uh, the paintbrush is for cleaning. The common misconception is that circuit boards can't get wet. But uh, I'm going to prove that's not a problem. So. The circuit board, the solder piece we use, uses water-soluble flux. So you clean the circuit board with water. And uh, so you rinse it under the faucet here. And I'm going to try to stand the phone up so that you can see this. There you go. So, this is, uh, this is pretty hot. It's pretty much as hot as I can stand it. So get the board under there. And then you just kind of clean it up, make sure you work it in there, try to make sure you get all that flux off of there, it's getting a little hotter, uh, get the water heater kicked down, and uh, get underneath the, the legs of the chips as much as you can, because uh, this stuff will corrode, it's actually the way the flux works, the flux uh, actually corrodes a little bit in order to uh, clean the surface and make it a, uh, a good bond for uh, the solder. Get uh, the propylene water heater. Come on. So yeah, just uh, clean it up a bit. And then uh, rinse it off. Nothing on the back, but uh, the silk screen, so you don't have to worry about that too much. And then, uh, blot it dry, paper towel. So, just like that. Alright, and then 
and I'll uh, take it out to the garage and uh, blow it off real good with the compressor. And then uh, I usually like to hit it with a heat gun and uh, just to get the whole board up to, uh, you know, like a uh, probably about 100 degrees Celsius, maybe a little less. And, uh, you know, I'll make sure that you uh, get all the water off it. So I'll take care of that now. Alright, so now that it's all dried with the hot air, we're going to uh, solder in the last few pieces. We got a couple different opto opto couplers here um, and uh, capacitor. And uh, I kind of like this capacitor, it's kind of cool. It's uh, the only electrolytic capacitor on the whole board, so I uh, picked a pretty good one. It's, uh, well, I think. It's rated, uh, I think it's 10,000 hours at 105 degrees Celsius. Um, incredibly high rating, so it should last quite a long time. And, uh, I figured with the only electrolytic, it might as well be a good one. And then this is one of my favorite parts of the controller, 23-pin automotive-style connector. That'll uh, pop right in there. So, and, uh, I've got my soldering iron fired up here, and uh, I'll go ahead and get these in place. And there it is. I uh, got the uh, opto couplers in there, and uh, I haven't decided if those will be surface mount or not in the final one. Uh, you can get most of these in a gull wing package, but um, we'll see. And then. Uh, the connector, the capacitor, there's all that. All that's left now is to put in the two DC-DC converters, which I don't have. They are incredibly expensive, at about $15 a piece. And then uh, right here you can see the outline for the pre-charge resistor. So two DC-DC converters, pre-charge resistor, three opto-couplers, and then in there, there's two diodes missing, and um, one, two, three, four, five connectors. One's for serial. That's uh, the two-pin one is a temperature probe. Uh, four pins current sensor, and the two six-pin ones are for driver board outputs. And then uh, six-pin connector there for programming the AVR and the ethernet jack so it's uh, coming along just got to uh, order some more parts when I get some money and uh, yeah we'll be uh, ready to go I should be able to start getting some testing done even without some of this stuff um, so it's uh, definitely a head start I uh, can just hook up a uh, 5 volt converter tie it into there and then a uh, 15 volt one into the uh, other spot so all right I hope you guys enjoyed this little uh, tutorial if you want to call it of uh, how to build a circuit board thanks